So this video is going to look at halo alkane synthesis and that is the way that halo alkanes are made. So as a starting point really, you need to think well what is a halo alkane? So a halo alkane is, as the name suggests, an alkane with halogen attached. Uh, so if we were to take something like methane for example as an alkane, a saturated hydrocarbon, the halo alkane version, this is a simple version, could be something like chloromethane where all we've done is we've replaced a hydrogen, any of the hydrogens doesn't matter, with in this case a chlorine atom. And that could be a bromine atom, it could be fluorine iodine, doesn't matter. But the halogen replaces one of the hydrogen atoms and therefore we've got a halo alkane. So the next step is well how do you make a halo alkane? And actually it's quite straightforward really in that a halo alkane is made from a halogen and an alkane. So we really just have to add those two things together and by substituting in the chlorine um, for the hydrogen we have made the halo alkane. But we need to actually now think well how does that actually work? So the process of halo alkane synthesis occurs through a reaction called free radical substitution. This sounds quite similar to nucleophilic substitution so don't get confused between the two and uh, you're not required to do any sort of mechanism um, work within this. You just need to know that it is a free radical substitution reaction and it, that is forming the halo alkane. So it occurs in three steps. The first is the initiation step and as the name suggests this is where the reaction is initiated. Without this none of the other two steps can occur. So this is the first thing that happens. The second is the propagation step and this occurs in two steps in itself and then finally we have a termination step so initiation two propagation steps and then a termination now you need to be able to write equations for each one of these different steps um, depending on what molecules you are given the specification the AQA specification states you should know the reaction of methane um, but in an exam they could use anything they could whatever it doesn't matter what the initial starting molecule is um, you need to be able to write equations for how the ultimately the halo alkane is produced from that molecule so let's look at the reaction then of chlorine with methane um, to produce chloromethane so the initiation step in this reaction this is the reaction that I'm talking about here it's methane added to chlorine to give us chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. So the initiation step then. With any of these free radical substitution reactions, it doesn't matter which one it is, what the halogen is, or what the starting molecule is, the first step is always the same, but applied to the correct molecule. And that is that the halogen, so if we call the halogen X2 as a diatomic molecule, very, very important, that breaks down to become the free radical um, and that looks something like that obviously you'd produce two of those so there's a few things here you need to obviously understand the first is that this dot here it represents a single unpaired electron and it's this actual part here that is the free radical denoted by this dot and that's the very very important thing you must draw that dot on without it it's just an atom you're not specifying you must draw that to specify it's a free radical which can then take part in the later reactions the reason why this happens is that if you imagine the halogen molecule whatever it be, it could be chlorine, bromine, doesn't matter. If you imagine it's got a the covalent bond in between the two atoms, well what happens is um, when we shine UV light on, and that's basically the way this splitting occurs, which I'll mention in a second, the UV light allows for the halogen to turn into the two um, halogen free radicals. So what happens is the bond breaks equally. 
so we don't end up with one atom taking both electrons they each share remember that this is a shared pair of electrons this covalent bond so one electron goes over here the other one goes over there and actually to make this triangle look slightly clearer with these two electrons drawn in there do it like that so here we have a single headed arrow the single headed arrow denoting the movement of one electron um, and we have one electron going to here one going to here and obviously the end result there is that we end up with these two halogen free radicals so then to put it into a sort of real situation of what you would have to actually write so that would be the initiation step if chlorine were involved if bromine were involved it would look exactly the same but obviously Cl is replaced by Br so we're still producing two free radicals in both cases starting with the diatomic molecule each one of the radicals must have this single unpaired electron represented by that dot so we've actually started the reaction now we've initiated the reaction and we can go on now into our propagation step okay so propagation now and this is actually where we're going to make the halo alkane so the initiation step is just allowing for the reaction to ultimately begin this is now where we make the halo alkane and we do so now by reacting our starting molecule so I said it was uh, methane I was saying that we're reacting methane with chlorine back over here now we've broke our chlorine down into the free radicals so we react with one of those and what we do this first stage does not produce the halo alkane just yet we go from our methane molecule reacts with one free radical one chlorine free radical the methane molecule loses a hydrogen which joins with the chlorine free radical forming with the hydrogen chloride and then we form a new radical we form a methyl radical note here the single electron is on the left hand side now not the right it's drawn in here because that electron is actually single unpaired electron is actually on the carbon atom that's really important that that is actually drawn on that left hand side don't draw it over here that's not right it doesn't matter here because we're just talking about one atom but on this case where we're talking about molecules it must be on the correct point so the carbon here now this then goes on to react so our methyl radical reacts with chlorine as a its full diatomic molecular state this then forms as our chloromethane CH3Cl and another chlorine radical what's quite nice about this is that the chlorine actually doesn't get used the chlorine free radical doesn't get used up so actually I suppose in a way it acts as a catalyst here it takes part in the reaction there but it gets reformed at the end so we start with it and we end with it so that's just a point to point to be aware of and you can see here that what we've done is we have produced our halo alkane um, and, and that's obviously the the main point of this synthesis reaction now on this it doesn't matter what example you'd be given in an exam and they could they needn't give you methane um, they could give you any starting product they could they could give you um, dichloromethane as a starting product it doesn't matter the same thing is always stays true so the red boxes are going to show you things that actually remain the same no matter what the starting products are now in this case obviously I'm assuming that we this doesn't matter what this is but that we're using chlorine each time if that it was um, the reaction of an alkane with bromine this would be Br, Br, Br2 and the Br there as well so all that will change besides the halogen all that you'll have here is a different starting molecule but the same thing happens no matter what the starting molecule the alkane or the halo alkane is it also could be it loses a hydrogen to form a radical that radical then starts as it is reacting in the second step that then gains the halogen so ultimately you have this substitution then as the name is the free radical substitution we are substituting a hydrogen for a halogen we lose a hydrogen carry on gain the halogen and that's the same no matter what the starting molecule so if we were to do say a different example we looked at um, dichloromethane as a starting product so we could have CH2 Cl2 um, and we're trying to make trichloromethane for example 
exactly the same. Chlorine still there. Hydrogen chloride still there. This time we're not going to form a methyl radical. We're just going to lose one of these hydrogens. So we're going to still have the radical CH Cl2. So we've kept both chlorines. We've just taken the hydrogen away. That's going to carry on now through to the second step. It's going to react with the chlorine to form as our trichloromethane. So we've just now added a chlorine atom onto this molecule. And finally, the chlorine free radical. So you can see this portion, the red boxes, haven't changed. They remain exactly the same each time. And although, yeah, these, these things do change, actually that stays the same across there. And the only difference between that and that is you've substituted in a halogen. So actually it's not too bad once you start to think about this, and you can learn this as a template really, just to put your correct molecules in the correct places. It's actually not too bad at all. Uh, the final step, of course, then, is the termination step, um, which I'll just move upwards for. So, termination. No matter what happens here, the termination step involves two radicals coming together to form a non-radical. So, the first example could be we could have two chlorines coming together. Two chlorine radicals coming together to form chlorine. That would be an example. Um, a termination step. Sometimes in exams they will say just give a termination step. Or they could say if we were starting with methane and we were reacting it with chlorine, one of the termination steps they might specify, write a termination step um, that shows the production of ethane. In which case we could have the two methyl radicals coming together to form as ethane. So CH3, CH3, give us C2H6. And the final one. Again, obviously, I'm linking this to my, my original example of methane and chlorine. Um, the final one here we could have would be CH3, Cl. So you can see, we start with radicals each time, two radicals. We end with non-radicals, and that's the termination step done. And actually, that there is pretty much the entirety of the haloalkane synthesis. There's one extra part in that they expect you to be able to talk about ozone. Um, and particularly it's depletion due to CFCs, so these things, CFCs, chloro, fluoro, carbons, so e.g. Um, C, H, C, L, F2, something like that, or C, C, L2, F2, we've got chloro, fluoro, carbons. The reason these were used um, were because they were very good, quite good solvents. They were used as um, solvents and propellants um, in aerosol cans. They were used um, also as coolant and refrigerants in fridges. And the problem is that when they rise up into the atmosphere, um, the same, let's just go back to where I was before, when they go into the atmosphere, this same initiation step occurs and we actually find that the UV light coming from the Sun actually causes the molecule to break and what happens is the carbon chlorine bond within this molecule so we'll say we have um, we'll start with this top one, we'll say we're using this one so if you imagine the CH, we'll put the F's down here. So CH, ClF2. This bond, due to the UV light, this bond breaks, and we end up then with this chlorine radical. Obviously, we then look at another radical here, but it's, it's this chlorine radical that is a bit of a problem. And what happens is that actually attacks the ozone. So the chlorine radical attacks the ozone, which is this the guy here, O3, and in doing so it forms oxygen, 
and it forms a new radical thing here which then goes on to react with more ozone again forming O2 and chlorine radical again balance that up now you might say well, this isn't a problem we're making O2 that's good we need we need oxygen to breathe and that's absolutely true we do need oxygen but the problem is that ozone in the atmosphere it acts to um, almost filter it's it's a big it forms this layer around around the earth and it filters out some of the UV radiation so um, say so it protects us from UV radiation now it doesn't give us complete 100% protection because you, we know that skin cancer occurs as a result of UV radiation from the sun as opposed to sunbeds and things actually from the sun from people being outside but it does help to protect us so if we ran out basically of ozone if we caused um, for it to be degraded into you know oxygen as a result of these CFCs we would find that things like skin cancer would be that much more prevalent uh, which is a problem so actually what happened was uh, the use of CFCs actually was banned uh, quite a few years ago now and we no longer use CFCs in products purely for the reason that the overall effect was they were damaging the ozone so this really is an application certainly this area here that's this is an application of free radical substitution in the real world the CFCs breaking down to produce the ozone the one thing actually would also like to say is that you may be thinking well why is the carbon chlorine bond broken here not the carbon fluorine bond ultimately they're too strong those bonds are too strong to break therefore it's this one that breaks as a result of the UV light giving us that chlorine radical um, so there you have it um, that's a video on haloalkane synthesis and how it occurs due to free radical substitution